Here I've got a nice problem that was suggested on the Art of Problem Solving forum as like sort of a generalization or maybe a riff off of a number theory problem from the Bangladesh Math Olympiad. So let's see what we have. So we're gonna define a prime P to be a really awesome prime if for all primes Q that are smaller than P, we have P plus two Q is also prime. And then our goal, so the question, is to find the largest really awesome prime. And so since we're asked to find the largest really awesome prime, that means that this largest is probably quite small. Otherwise, there'd be a ton of work to do, but we know that since it's a math contest type problem, generally the solution is quite short. Well, let's do a little bit of exploration first. So I guess you could have the case when P equals two and there are no smaller primes. So you would get like an empty sum right here, but maybe that's not super interesting. So we'll start with P equals three, which means the possible smaller primes are just the number two. So Q could be equal to two. And then we get P plus two Q, which is three plus two times two, which is seven, that's prime. So that means that P equals three is a really awesome prime. Now let's look if P equals five. So if P is equal to five, the smaller primes are two and three. We can calculate five plus two times two, that's nine, which is not prime. Whereas five plus two times three is 11, which is prime. But remember, these always have to be prime in order to be a really awesome prime. So that means that this P equals five is not a really awesome prime. Now let's look at the next case, P equals seven. So that gives us three choices for Q. We have two, three, and five. So seven plus two times two is 11, seven plus two times three is 13, and seven plus two times five is 17. Those are all primes. So that makes P equals seven a really awesome prime. Now another thing that I'd like to point out is that the primes three, five, and seven are the only triples of primes, or prime triplets, if you will. And those are primes that are each separated by two. We have three, three plus two, and three plus four. That's because if you go higher than that, you're guaranteed to have one of them a multiple of three. And this is actually really important because that gives us some motivation that seven may in fact be our largest really awesome prime. And that's because if we have a prime which is larger than seven, then that means Q comes from the set two, three, five, seven, so on and so forth. But then we'll have to calculate P plus two times three, P plus two times five, and P plus two times seven. And perhaps that would come up with an issue just like it does in that proof of only finitely many prime triples. But that being said, this isn't a proof yet. Let's maybe use this as motivation to prove that in fact, P equals seven is the largest really awesome prime. So we just did a bunch of exploration after setting up the problem, and now we're ready to prove what will indeed solve this problem, which is that this claim is true, that seven is the largest really awesome prime. But before we do that, I'd like to urge you to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Only about half the viewers of this channel are subscribed, so it would be nice if we could make that number larger. Okay, so let's get into this proof. So first of all, from before, in other words, from that chart that we made or that list that we made, we showed that seven is really awesome. And that was just from that simple calculation. So I won't repeat that simple calculation. Now we want to suppose, we, or we want to show that if we have a larger prime, <clears throat> and now we want to show that if we, and now we want to show that if we have a larger prime, then it cannot be awesome. So let's suppose that P is bigger than seven is prime and consider the following numbers. So let's consider P plus two times three. So that would be six 
p plus two times five, so that would be 10, and then p plus two times seven, so that would be 14. Okay, so we're able to do that because q equals three, five, and seven are, maybe I'll just say allowed here. That's because those are primes which are smaller than p. Okay, great. And now we're gonna break this into two cases. So case one and case two. And those will deal with not quite the parity of P, but the remainder of P when dividing by three. In other words, the residue class of P mod three. Okay, so case number one is P is equal to three K plus one for some natural number K, or maybe I'll say non-negative integer K. And then our second case will be P equals 3K plus two for some non-negative integer K. You might say, well, what if P is equal to three times K? But that's impossible because P is a prime. And if P was equal to three times K, then it would be a multiple of three. But then since it's prime, it has to be equal to three, but it's larger than seven, so that is not possible. Okay, great. And now let's look at p plus 6, p plus 10, and p plus 14 in each of these cases. So let's, in particular, in this case, we'll note that p plus 14 is in fact equal to 3k plus 15, which is equal to 3 times k plus 5, which is not prime. We know that's not prime because we just factored it. So that means that if we have a really awesome prime bigger than seven, then it cannot be of the form 3k plus one because we end up with something on this list that's not prime. So now let's move into the other one. And looking at the other one, we'll notice that p plus 10 causes the problem here. So let's note that p plus 10 here is the same thing as 3k plus 12. But then we can factor a 3k or a 3 out of that and we get 3 times k plus 4. Again, this is not prime. So if we've got a prime larger than 7, then either this guy is not prime or this guy p plus 14 is not prime, which tells us that our prime is not awesome, which tells us the largest possible awesome prime is 7, and we checked that that was really awesome. And that's a good place to stop. Music